We, this evening, have got a amazing and timely episode. We are going to be talking with Andrew Brown about career development and job searching as a skill. Um, as we all know, this is 2024. Things are kind of a hot dumpster fire and folks are looking for jobs out there. People have questions. Folks, get in on the conversation. If you are in the studio audience, feel free to at V Brown Bag on any of the social media platforms. We are listening on Twitter. We're listening on threads. We're, we're even listening on Facebook. We're listening on YouTube. We have all of our ears open. And as you know, we have AWS Hero and CEO of ExamPro. .co. Hi, everyone. I'm Andrew Brown. Um, you might remember me from some previous events or, or some of my free content, but I'm hoping today that we can uh, try to give some people some new types of tips that they can try to utilize when looking for um, uh, jobs, especially if you are looking for your first job in tech. And so I'm hoping to bring some valuable information here today. I run a platform called ExamPro, which is a learning platform, uh, and we teach cloud certifications and we do uh, cloud boot camps. But uh, you know, prior to that, I worked in the tech industry for I don't know how many years, 15, 17 years. Mm -hmm. I keep saying 15 years. For, for my, my career trajectory, like I was working for uh, startups uh, as a CTO, and then um, I ran my own uh, dev firm for many years. Um, you know, my family, uh, my family comes from uh, technology, so we had a family business uh, uh, doing computer repair, and everything was very entrepreneurial. Uh, and so, you know, for me to get work has always been um, uh, uh, taking a different approach to it. Uh, I've always found it uh, quite the struggle to do a traditional kind of hiring pipeline where you go in and you apply. And so I've always taken the back roads to getting hired. And so I think that I have just a lot of great uh, advice that, I, that I've actually used and works and still works uh, that I'm hoping that people are interested in finding out about. And so uh, uh, no exciting slides today, but I do have this big uh, document, which I am planning to, to publish as I am working with uh, multiple guest uh, authors to try to lift uh, as much uh, useful advice as we can here. Um, but, you know, what was happening was I was talking to uh, boot campers and uh, they were struggling to get into the market. And um, I decided it was time to uh, revisit it, uh, revisit it, and take a look at what it was like to try to get hired again. Um, and I was very surprised to find out that um, a lot of the uh, sage advice that has been uh, been circulating for the last uh, year or two uh, might be a bit outdated, and we need to kind of uh, raise the bar in terms of the effort of going out there and trying to get hired. Um, and so I noticed, uh, like just going on LinkedIn and Indeed and going through the job postings that the that we're seeing more entry level roles that were asking for five years experience and the on entry the, level role. Yeah. And the and I mean maybe well we'll talk about that in a second here. And the other component to it was the fact that um uh uh, companies are becoming very uh, particular about their stacks. I mean, they always have if you're in the developer space, but even more so that they're they're asking for those demands. And it seemed like every single job posting was completely different from the other ones in the, in in those channels. If you were, to, uh, and so I, I think that a lot of people are feeling, um, especially new like new people uh, trying to mm. get their first uh, tech roles. That it's like uh, you ever seen the have you ever had seen the book Magic Eye? Where you have the uh, magic eye? Let's let's uh, let's go on the internet. That, are you talking about the three D one? Yeah. yeah. And so it's kind of oh, like those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like you're staring at this thing. You're trying to figure out what's going on, and and uh, for whatever reason, you can't seem to figure it out. And so I kind of feel like that's what people are experiencing, where uh, they don't know what they're looking at. And um, I'm hoping to help them see that three D picture. Uh, you know. So, um, hmm. but anyway. Not to say that you can't get work on LinkedIn or Indeed. I know some people that are having su some success, but I think that really has to do with uh, how you are targeting uh, your roles. Um, and we can talk about how to search for uh, roles on LinkedIn or Indeed. But you know, I, again, I want to try to talk about all these other uh, ways that you can uh, uh, discover how you can get hired. Um, and so I figured that'd be worth jumping in. We could talk about all the challenges that, like, why the market is the way it is. I don't know if people really care about that. Um, I think it's more like, what do I need to do? Let's jump into it. Um, and so, you know, the common advice that we keep hearing is to get your certifications, then do your project, 
uh, and then go apply. But if nobody is willing to even look at your, like take you on uh, for that interview process, then you're kind of at a dead stop. Um, and, you know, I think what maybe one of the reasons why, and again, I don't want to get into too much of the lies, but I think that a lot of companies are facing a, a large amount of applicants that are applying. And even when I was hiring about a year and a half ago, like we did an entry level role for cloud, like a real entry level role for cloud. And it was like 400 plus people that applied for it, right? And the pay wasn't mm -hmm. even good either. And so that's where you get to a point where you're like, oh, now I need an ATS, an application tracking system. Um, and, uh, you know, the ability of trying to get someone to actually see your stuff is completely different when a machine is looking at it first. And so I feel mm -hmm. that um, you need to either find an alternate way to get um, the decision makers or stakeholders attention so they, they'll actually get to see what your stuff is, or you try to uh, work within a, a less competitive space where people aren't sending a, like 400, like they're not getting 400 applicants for. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that understands that, that that requires two different things. So I'll give one example quickly here. Um, and so like my background was Ruby on Rails. I'm like really good at this particular framework. That's how I got started. And I just know that when you apply for these roles, they're not getting 400 applicants. Okay. Because Rails is, I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not the, uh, the darling of the, the development community anymore. But the point is that there's still a lot of companies that are using it and they're very particular in terms of how they use these stacks. And so I, you know, I, I was trying to get some of my boot campers to learn Ruby on Rails and I was showing them as I walked through this that I could go in here. And I could tell exactly, uh, like just looking at uh, the way they wrote the text, like the, what they chose in their stack, what that company looked like, and knowing that these are less competitive, that I could I could then have that opportunity to write that cover letter or write that uh, first paragraph to specifically highlight the things that they're really interested in. I think that's what's mm -hmm. really important is is being able to uh, uh, to get that, but. Um, you know, I, I think that one thing that people can do is, is try to uh, narrow down what it is that they are uh, targeting and not go to the big funnel and go like, I'm going to hit every every job posting possible, but maybe uh, narrow the scope of what you are, are trying to apply for. But uh, 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 what do you folks think about that? So I should learn Fortran. Yes. and get the three jobs that are that they're clawing for is that what is that what i'm hearing sure i, I just mean okay. to say that i just mean to say that like there are pockets of 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 tech that are not saturated like for instance in canada um there are school boards like i'm up in a more remote area they mm. can't find anyone to do tech at all and they, right. they're working on like cloud infrastructure like with azure and and stuff like that um and they have nobody so I'm just saying that there are definitely are opportunities there, but you have to understand that um, these jobs are not showing up necessarily on LinkedIn or Indeed, um, mm -hmm. and you need to call out. You have to you have to actually hone your skills to have particular things, um, and then uh, try to find a group of those and apply to them. So like if you want to go after school boards, you'll, you're going to find there's a pattern with school boards of what they're looking for, uh, uh, and there's only so much variation between them, and so that randomness of every job being different doesn't look so random anymore. It looks, oh, okay, there's this base thing that people want, and then there's four or five flavors underneath. Um, and yes, there's less of those, but there, there's the, the competition is not as bad, and I feel like there's more opportunity there. Yeah, and, and, you, and it's a, there's an obvious demand for it. Okay, so let's... It, it has been a while since I've had to, like, go look for a job i'm 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 very i'm very privileged in the fact that i i have a i have a online personality and people know me so when 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 somebody like you know wants wants somebody like chris williams they, they come to me and and then we have a conversation for somebody getting into the business today a, a somebody that has just graduated or somebody that's that's looking to get into the field what is the wrong way to do it what is the way that they shouldn't be doing it is it going on indeed and linkedin and 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 carpet bombing their resume out to every single thing out there is is that is that the not good way now well, I, I would say that it's it's less efficient um, because again, I do know people that are getting jobs via LinkedIn or Indeed, but they already there uh, for those particular funnels. Mm. Uh, they're having more success because what they're targeting, like whether it's like let's say IT networking, 
uh, mm -hmm. in a very specific region, it's less of an issue. But like when you say cloud engineer or solution architect or DevOps, these are very broad roles and mm -hmm. uh, they're really different. And so that becomes very ineffectual. I would say um, uh, the biggest problem is that people, uh, I feel like they don't plan, like when they're transitioning to tech, they're not making a, a like a, a, giving them themselves enough runway to transition. So like, mm -hmm. I, I feel that, and I feel that this is a realistic goal, but it's like you set three years, three years runway. And what, what I mean by that is like, you're gonna have this other job you're not going to just quit your job and go full in on tech, which a lot of people have done. Uh, mm -hmm. You're going to make sure that you can support yourself for those three years. And you're going to assume the first year is grabbing your fundamentals. The second year is getting your practical experience. Your third year is you trying to actually land that role. Now, of course, you don't have to divvy it up like that. But the idea is that um, if you think of it, the effort that uh, that is put in, I feel like three years is more realistic. Um, and you know, I talk to people, and they're they're like, I'm taking this boot camp that's a thousand dollars per cert, and it's five certs uh, that I'm taking, and I'm just about to pass my cloud petitioner, and I'm going to become a solution architect in nine months, and I'm going, okay, I mean, and I have to say to them like, okay, maybe you're the special one that that knows how to do it, but like, mm -hmm. and they and they and they don't have no other money, right? They they quit their job and they're doing it full time and they're going full in. And um, this is the basically because there's a lot of false expectations online with, uh, and I think certifications are good. I think they serve a purpose, but um, I think that there's an inflation in terms of, you know, what these results can produce. Um, and I think that's that's one part of the problem, right? So then when you only think you're gonna get nine months, you become more desperate and you're not gonna try longer strategies or fine tuning those skills. You're just gonna carpet bomb. So whether or not I, I tell you all this stuff, if you don't have that runway. Yeah, and you put yourself into a desperate position because you've you've quit your job. So yeah. let me let me say, state back to you what I think I heard you just say. Keep your current job, mm -hmm. study at night and give yourself conservatively three years to pivot from whatever it was you were doing, mm -hmm. whether that be bartending or a pilot or whatever like that. Well, maybe not a pilot. Um, and and uh, skill up, you know, in the evenings, you know, t take like a consulting, like a consulting position or something so that you can so that you can work on the weekends. Well, so so this is the thing is that, you know, um, a lot of people are having a hard time getting experience. And so there are many ways of getting experience, like first is getting hired, right? But if you can't get hired, then you're going to have to somehow get some kind of real real world experience and you mm -hmm. can make your own project. But unless the project is like really specific to the company that uh, that you're uh, that is hiring you they're mm -hmm. probably not going to care about it as much as as you think as you think they are uh, okay. and i know this because i used to build project to hire so like when i ran my my web dev firm i would i would approach places that were looking to hire and i wanted contract work they don't usually want to hire contractors um but i would i would somehow talk to these companies i'd find a, a an indirect way to talk to them and uh, I would I would ask them, you know, what it is that they're trying to build. And uh, 48 hours, I come back with an MVP. And I, mm -hmm. I just hand them the keys. Like, I'd be like, here you go. Here's the GitHub repo code base. You can have it, do whatever you want with it. If you want to do something with it, you're going to have to hire me. And always, always I got work. And so that's an example where uh, a project, you're building a project for a very specific uh, use case to get hired. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's after I've had that conversation with that company, right? Um, and so I find that if you're going to build a project, it's better to build a um, a project that you can leverage over and over again in different scenarios. Um, and this is actually really normal for uh, dev firms. It's like they will have a base template project. It'll actually build scaffolding so they can just like run a command, basically cloud formation, right? But mm -hmm. uh, developers use their own tools. And then you fine tune a product and show that you can deliver it on it very quickly. Um, and I, I feel like that is uh, uh, one way to do it. But you know, if, if that's not what you want to do, then there's obviously getting remote work. Like I used to get work on, um, it's called Elance, but Elance merged with Odesk and now they're Upwork. And so mm -hmm. this is this is competitive, but there still is a, a, a better chance than getting hired, I would say, um, because here, like you have, this is where your projects shine more, where, where you can build five, 10 projects and then uh, like major categories being I mean, like, I'm going to build one for real estate. I'm going to build one for fintech. I'm going to build one for whatever. 
And then somebody, uh, companies that are looking to hire, they're going to then have, uh, you have a better chance of aligning with them. So this is where projects kind of make more sense. But when you're applying for places like that, that are hiring, they don't usually care as much, if that makes sense. Sorry? No, no, that's, that's good stuff. Okay. Uh, any questions in the audience yet? Uh, I yes, see a couple of... I'm oh. fixing to pop one out. Here's one. Where might one find consulting work asking for a friend? John. So, so, and this is uh, what I have a lot about in this document because, um, uh, like, again, I, I would drum up work all the time and it would, it would be incidental, but I just remember a lot of times me doing this. So, like, uh, when I would go and do, um, I, I like to do a lot of community stuff. So, I would go and do free training uh, for uh, innovation centers in Canada, and I would go to Chamber of Commerce, and uh, Chamber of Commerce always have. They always have like an educational uh, uh, department. And if you're not part of that Chamber of Commerce, you can just suggest like, hey, I'm just trying to help people out. And so we would do some like cloud training or development training. And then we'd also offer them free uh, solution architecting. So we'd say, hey, come in and learn about cloud or whatever mm -hmm. and see and, and get your feet wet. And most people can't make any progress. They don't really want to learn cloud. They just want, they want to solve a problem, right? And so these businesses come in and then you will have a private one-on-one -on -one call with them and get to directly talk to them about their issues and then architect a problem to them. And often that they, they would want you to go then build it. Um, and so all you have to do to do that as a community member is to reach out to your local nonprofits, innovation centers, accelerators, incubators, chamber of commerce, and, and arrange that. And the thing is that that opportunity might not come around like immediately. It's something that might line up three to six months because companies companies and organiz organizations are slow, but it is very effective um, uh, strategy that I think that just nobody is utilizing. So that is like a more direct way with your local population uh, to do that. But if you're not, then you're going to be going online uh, to this marketplace. If that doesn't work, you can go to, um, I had it open up here earlier, Crunchbase. So we go to, uh, this is this is a strategy I've used a lot to get uh, to get work, whether I wanted to get hired or otherwise. Um, but Crunchbase will list all startups. Um, and I think they actually charge for this now, but at uh, one point you could search for free. So I haven't been here a while because I haven't had to to uh, to to drum up work because I'm in education now. But the idea is like I could go here and say I want to find startups in Toronto. So I'm just looking for um, here Toronto, right? And um, if this used to be free, but like if you paid for this, you could sort this and say, I want to find a company of a particular size. So I could go here and say, show me a company that has only 10 employees. What's the chance of you talking to a key stakeholder of a company that has 10 employees? Very high, right? Hmm. Um, yep. And then I would sort and I would say, okay, you could even determine like what level of funding that they raised on here. So I would look for seed or pre-seed and I would look at how, how, long ago they got it because if they got the money like in the last six months nine months they probably haven't um they if they have a technical person they might be the co-founder or they're looking to hire their first um technical employee right and a lot of times these companies don't have the money to go full time right so they're looking hmm. for for contractors but they're looking for those ones that are going to be very uh, very go go getters that come out and so i've always found this a really great way of of drumming up work if if covid has uh, uh brought back shared offices shared offices was a great thing um if you rent if you rent like a space in a shared office and you just work in there eventually you'll meet all the people in there and a lot of times that turns into work as well so i, you know, I feel like there's lots of opportunity but um, again it's not something that's going to happen yeah uh, it's not going to be instant right it's going to be something that you have to uh just be doing and it's going to take three to six months and that's why i say like you should literally allocate a year uh, to finding the work, if that makes sense. Now, um, I'll tell you, Andrew, uh, Amina actually made that particular comment uh, about finding job boards that are less saturated where people, you know, won't necessarily look. Um, but I, I just want to just mention that for that particular piece where you're looking for particular job boards, it's still going to take time, like Andrew is saying. So be mindful that while they may not necessarily be a lot of people looking there, they might still scrutinize your resume or the resumes that they do get because of the small pool of applicants. And, and the thing is, you really have to understand the cultures of these companies because different 
uh, it, like when we talked about the school boards, they have their own culture in terms of what they're looking for. Same thing as like you go to Rails, they uh, there's uh, a culture and subcultures in there, whether it's networking or anything. And so if you don't understand that, or if you can't figure that out, then you're like, it's like when you play video games, there's like a meta, right? And you're figuring out what that strategy is. So, you know, um, I, I can teach people the Ruby on Rails meta strategy because I worked in it many years. And so it would help to, uh, if you're looking for a particular role or like a particular thing, to try to find someone that understands the meta and at least teach that stuff so that they can identify that stuff for you so that, uh, you know, even if you can't see the 3D picture, at least they can, right? Uh, and translate that over. But, um, uh, and I think, um, uh, uh, we had a question. It was Ultraman was saying if, if uh, uh, had I worked in Spain, and actually that was uh, the first time I was able to uh, get a really good job. Um, and that was actually Teambox, which is over here. And the way I got this job was this was an open source repo. Um, people don't remember Teambox because it's from a long time ago, but this was the direct competitor to Basecamp. Uh, and so basically, we we're hmm. and, and people. So, someone said online, they're like, "Don't build clones because you can't you can't get jobs from building clones." I'm gonna tell you, I got a lot of work building clones uh, because there's a lot of, like in Europe, everything is a clone. Every project they make is like the European version of, of an American American product um, because they have their own markets, their own uh, like data sovereignty, all like all different stuff. And so um, this was an open source project. It wasn't in best shape. It was a Rails project. I decided for a week to just start com uh, uh, contributing code. And apparently, I saved the company because they they had they had raised their seed money and whatever, and uh, they just didn't have the developer skills, and so uh, they weren't getting any more money. And apparently, I turned it around, um, and so they were able to raise another round. They said, "Hey, you 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 fixed the company, so here come come over here. You can be the CTO if you want. Come over to Barcelona." And I wasn't trying to get that job. I was just I just had a client that showed me this, and I just wanted to uh, practice my rail skills. And, and that's how I got that that job. Um, and that still works today. Maybe applications aren't as uh, attractive as they used to be, uh, whereas things are more, um, uh, you know, AI focused. Uh, but, but my point is, is that that opportunity still exists, but you have to be doing that on a regular basis. Um, and it's not gonna be instantaneous and you, and you never know the results of stuff. So I, I don't try to worry about getting an instant result. I just know that there are good habits and then they will eventually uh, produce something, if that makes sense. Yeah. So um, Mark Pergola, one of one of my favorite people, has a fantastic question. I'm not sure if it makes sense, but what fantasies of the ease of tech roles and learning and prepping for them aren't true or are long gone now? Um, I will start with getting a cert will get you a job. Mm. Uh, I, I would I would like to dispel that myth immediately. Uh, Andrew, would you like to follow up and add to that, or or take oh, that yeah, in a different course. direction? I, you know, I think the problem there is that uh, uh, they have to be buying my certification courses for to. <laughs> yes, that's that's the entire but, thing. But but anyway, so I'm just kidding there. I'm not. Uh, I'm I'm just I'm trying to show like the the other side of it there. But um, the the thing is is that at a time. And I remember it there, like in cloud, like 2016, 2018, just taught, like when I was in Toronto, just talking about having a certification in AWS, companies were like, ooh, let's let's interview you. Like, they like, because I, I don't like having to put a resume in. I, I can't stand doing that. And so uh, when the market that I was in, the non-cloud market, the just being a developer, building web applications at scale for startups, everyone started calling themselves full stack developers and the market was saturated with, um, uh, people that didn't have that level of skill. And so there's too much noise. And so I said, okay, I'm going to move over to cloud because companies don't understand cloud. And um, they, they really didn't. And so if you came here and you said, I, I kind of understand it, then they're willing to hear you out. Uh, and if you had a certification, then that was even better. But that was 2016, 2018. But then 2019, 2020, uh, companies started to get caught up, especially when COVID hit. Companies mm. really got caught up, and we don't need those folks anymore. Everyone knows what cloud is now. Like not everybody, but uh, uh, like it's it's been uh, people have kicked the tires on it. Um, and the point is, is that now we're going back to roles that are just like, okay, I want someone that has a deep understanding of uh, IT networking or development skills or 
you know, system system engineering or, or system architecting. Uh, and and so that's when they when we see these entry level roles. I think that's what they're trying to say is like this is entry level role for cloud, but the expectation is you are already a uh, intermediate to senior in this underlying thing. But mm. certifications did serve a purpose at one point. But uh, I think that's kind of the the, the fault of the um, the cert providers because if they want those to matter, then they have to do better than a multiple choice uh, question. I still think certs are great as a learning path, but I, I think that they're overblown. Uh, they set false expectations in terms of the results they, they return. Um, mm -hmm. So, sorry, yes? Oh, I can are there completely agree with that. Um, you know, as as the, the CCIE proved to me, if you're not able to actually do it, then you're, you know, I mean, a multiple choice um, plan is not a good idea. Um, it, I, I would love to see, for instance, like AWS implement a lab type scenario where you go in and they give you a solution or a, a proposed solution and say, build this for us. Right. And then, you know, you have to explain it at the end or something, um, something to that effect. But it would be nice to see more certification exams go away from the multiple choice questions and into more lab based scenarios. So you can actually prove to a person that you can actually do some of this work as opposed to just run in, study, um, you know, for five, six hours for a test or even go get a, you know, um, a question dump and then go in and take a test or brute force a test because you've taken it six times and now you know all the <laughs> questions. So I, I want to see some them get a little bit more creative with the exam process to eliminate the imposters. Uh, and, and Boris in the chat is talking about how, and I, I agree with him here, which is uh, certifications, if you, already you're, if you already have a job and you're just trying to learn the thing, then you know, it's not like you're qualifying to get a job that you already have. You are you're using it as a learning path, uh, which is fine. Um, the other the other part of it was like there used to be like Microsoft used to have more hands on labs, um, mm -hmm. and that's before they were role based. Um, I mm -hmm. think they're bringing it back a bit, but for whatever reason, they kind of uh, decided not to do that anymore. Uh, they might be bringing it back in some areas, but um, you know, I think that like for me it has to be either we just have to be honest about the expectations or the outcomes of these these certifications like if they're multiple choice that's fine but let's not have aws employees saying like it's going to change your life and it gives you a 40 percent chance of getting a job and that's what i'm seeing literally that's why i get mm -hmm. mad every other day on, online or 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 uh making it part of that path uh, or let's let's raise that bar and make it harder but um i don't know that's one the, the other one is, I think, projects is, um, uh, and I wouldn't say projects aren't good, like I mentioned good use cases where they are effective, or at least I think they're effective, but I think the, the issue there is um, when people are building projects, they're not hitting a level of complexity that actually matters. Um, so like they will go out and they will build something and they will call it a project, but it's what I would actually call a lab a basic lab. So they'd be like, oh. I set up an S3 bucket. That's not a project. Do you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> I've, you know, like it's not, it doesn't hit any level of complexity. Like even if you were to launch a web app on it, you have to hit something. Like it has to be something that someone would actually come across and actually want to ask you questions about because maybe it's something they haven't solved yet. Mm -hmm. Or they've, they've experienced the same problem. So they uh, they know that you, you hit that level of experience. So like, if you're building a web application, let's say you uh, you take an application and you first put it on virtual machines and it gets to a point where uh, you have recontention on your database because uh, you know, you're doing that. What was the strategy that you took to fix that, right? Um, and it could be very specific, like you use a very specific stack. So like if it was Rails, Ruby is really uh, known for uh, memory leaks, right? And so maybe that was the thing that you had to work through. And so you had to figure out how to uh, uh, profile for memory leaks and stuff like that. And so now you're getting to something interesting. Uh, and so when we did our boot camp, I was really hoping, there were students that did this, but I was hoping that uh, people would document it and they would try to use different things. And, and I wanted them to document the stuff that, um, not the routine stuff, but the stuff that was actually uh, where they ran into problems. Like, like hypothesis, this is what I think is wrong. This is how I work through it. This is the steps. This is how you can replicate it. Um, but that was my thoughts there. But anyway, yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, I, I just want to touch on something really quick. John made a comment earlier and um, he actually posted a myth. It's possible to be indispensable. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, it, it really depends. Um, but uh, I think that uh, uh, these days you, you can see there's a lot, a lot of churn. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and I mean, like, I haven't me, seen so, it happen. I was going to say, I haven't seen it happen before. And I've even been in a spot where if I got hit by a bus, <laughs> like, it's going to be real deep bad for that company, but, you know, it'll get figured out. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, no, nobody's indispensable. Especially I mean, like, the CEO. I mean, I mean, school boards, they seem to, they seem to hold on to you forever. But, um, uh, I'd like, there are some like traditional industries where I've seen people, they've been there forever, but even, even still, like, um, I, I've never found tech to be, I don't know, like everyone's like talking about tech being so stable for me. It was like the company could be gone every three months, every three months it could be gone to be like, no matter what, like no matter how much money they ever made. Like I worked for one company that was a real estate company tens of millions of dollars still wasn't enough so the company was liquidated do you know what i mean and i'm just like there is no stability in tech but there is there is a lot of mobility in tech there is a lot of um uh, upward growth in tech mm -hmm. um and it can be very egalitarian so if you're really good you, and plus knowing how to work the system you can you can do really well if, if you can handle the stress <laughs> so so let's touch yeah. a little bit on on working the system. Uh, Amina says, can we please touch on social networking? I hear that a lot, but what are some practical ways uh, we could network with others and establish a relationship without sounding fake? So my recommend, so first off, when somebody says social networking, I don't think about like Twitter or Facebook or any of that stuff. Social networking in the context of trying to get your name out there and get your brand av available is going to local meetups. It's getting presenting at, at, at your at your local meetups on projects that you're working on stuff and, and getting your name out there. So Amina, if, um, if, if you're wanting to do something like that, or if you're interested in doing something like that, that is a, I have found that to be an excellent way to, to get your name out there. Um, and Andrew's, you know, set for work uh, for, for the for the foreseeable future, not because he's big on LinkedIn and Twitter and stuff, but because he goes out and does these talks and and shows off his expertise in a in a in a way that allows other people to go, oh yeah, I would love to have him recreate Twitter and in Finland for me. I don't know whatever whatever the whatever you do, whatever nut, nutty stuff you do, Andrew. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, I mean, I, again, I don't have to go to Finland because I pretty much like the part of Canada, I'm in, Canada I, I'm in. There's a lot of Finnish people here because it's similar, similar climate. But we have a lot of saunas here, so I don't, I don't need to go to Finland for that. But um, uh, so you know, I think there's a lot of approaches to uh, uh, social networking or just networking in general uh, with people. Um, you know, uh, I'll, like for for instance, I'll give you an example. I wanted to build a. Uh, there's this game. Um, there's this game called uh, Tetris Attack for the Super Nintendo. I love that game. And mm -hmm. I wanted to to make a one-to-one a -one copy of that game. So I learned how to uh, code it frame by frame so that it, it would match one-to-one. -one. And I actually had to um, reverse engineer the uh, assembly code to find out that data. And so uh, after I worked for this ed tech company in Toronto, I went for a CTO position for another ed tech company. And I went in and uh, I didn't get the job because um, I, I questioned, I, uh, I think I rubbed the, the feathers of the, the person that was the highest tech person the wrong way. Because I, I told them, I said, why aren't they giving you the job? And they looked really bitter at me. But anyway, so I, I didn't get that job and I, I didn't really care. But um, I had built this app and then a month later they had a hack, a hack and tell. Right. And so I came there and their hack and tells the whole purpose of them is for them to find people in the community to hire. Right. People mm -hmm. don't know this, but like that's that's what, why companies do these events. They're trying to have an indirect way of hiring people. And this just this stuff still exists in Toronto, at least. And so I went there and I showed my project, best project ever. They're saying, oh, we'd love to hire you, whatever. I'm like, well, you already had the chance. So my point is, is that, um, you know, you can build cool projects and try to showcase them off at events. Or like in the AWS Toronto user group, um, it's run by Annika Rackspace. Do you know why they run that group? Because they're looking for people to hire. 
Yeah, That's why nice. they run it. So if and when I wanted to talk at the AWS Toronto user group, I, I presented, I put together not one, but like five or six presentations because I really wanted to talk. It wasn't even trying to get a job. I was just trying to, I really just wanted to present uh, at that event. And they said, oh, well, we're backed up for, for nine months or whatever, and, and we're not sure, right? And so the point was, is that I showed them that I had six different types of talks. And when somebody dropped out last minute, people always drop out last minute. They went, oh, Andrew has six talks. We'll pick, we'll have our pick. And that's what we'll do. When I wanted to talk at the um, AWS Toronto Summit, this is before I was a hero. And uh, you can ask Ross this, but like I did the same strategy because I was at the AWS Toronto user group and they were putting names for it. And so I put one, uh, my one thing for it and I got rejected. And I said, who's the person that actually makes the decisions? I bugged them. They told me it was Ross. And mm. so I got his email and I and I sent them like seven, <laughs> seven talks. I made seven <laughs> talks. And I just said, you gotta let me do this. And he said, he goes, all right, fine. And and he gave me he gave me like a slot. At the, he's like, I can fit you at the the earliest slot in the day. And it turns out that they made a slot for me at the AWS Toronto Summit, and there was no other things going on, so I had like everybody there. But that was persistence. And my point was, and I just I didn't just ask for it. I showed up with the work, right? So it I, it made it super easy for these people to say yes. So if you, even people say no, if they come back later on, that yes can can turn into something later on. Um, but uh, you know, social networking. There's lots of stuff to do. Like just being a good person really helps out a lot. Like we see, uh, like we have Ultraman in in the audience. We have Boris in the audience. They're they're doing. Uh, it's whether it's intentional or not. They're they're always showing up here and, and being good friends and um, being very supportive. And that is a really good way of, of building your network. Just being a good person. Uh, it doesn't have to be super complicated. You know. One thing. One thing I like to tell people. Because something I get asked about a lot is how did I find my mentors? And especially going to Amina's comment about not being fake. And this is speaking like for me and my personal experience, people that I've built connections with and, you know, they become my mentors and stuff like that. I didn't go into it with the mindset of what can I get from these people? Like literally what happened, people would come into either my live streams or we would chat when I had a Discord server or, you know, through Twitter, like, you know, Andrew, like I just kind of reached out one day and it's just me being genuine and just talking to the person and actually being friends with the person. And then it just goes from there. And so, you know, that's that's something important. Um, try not to go at it from the, the standpoint of what can I get from someone, but be genuine and be mindful and also be respectful. Because sometimes people can be pushy when they're trying to force a connection yeah. and then wonder why it's not working. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, I, I think that's the thing is just like if you feel that you're being fake, then maybe you're trying to uh, for, uh, force an opportunity, whereas uh, I'm not trying to like I'm creating opportunities, but I'm not I'm not trying to uh, uh, target them so specific. Like I, I showed examples where I am specifically soliciting when I'm when I'm contacting companies with things, but when it's just people out there in the community, it's it's a it's a different way of of approaching it, right? So I, I think that you can have it two different ways, um, but uh, uh, yeah, just. Just be a, just be just be authentic and 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 budget for that time, right? I think that's the biggest problem is that people just feel that they have to force something because they are stretched thin, and it comes back to having that runway and having a good plan for that, and then you can uh, naturally find an opportunity. I think. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. One question. Sorry. Did, I was going to say one question that's um, interesting is from. I don't want to say the name wrong. I hope I say it right. But Connell, Connell, um, where they're asking, does it make sense to maybe, oh, wait, that's the different one. But they were asking, they were oh. going after here it Oracle. Is, here it is. That one. Yeah, this is a good one, too. I got all the interviews cleared for OCI admin, but I was disqualified in CEO realm. It has been a year almost and no call for Oracle OCI. So do you recommend AWS over rare OCI? So uh, last last year, like uh, I was doing Twitter spaces and we didn't talk to Oracle, but we talked to like uh, hiring managers, people in hiring positions from 
all the different companies and you know uh, a good chunk of them said that you know if they found good talent they will call you back when they have an opportunity um i don't think it matters whether it's oracle or aws i just think it's a matter of uh you know do they want you as an applicant uh if there's an opportunity opportunity to be there uh, oracle is a big company like you don't think it's big but it's it's still bigger than most um mm -hmm. so I, I don't i don't see much difference between those two when you're saying that like whether it's oracle or google cloud or vmware or, or like it's a broadcam now right so <laughs> you know uh, and, and that kind of goes back to your initial statement andrew of if if you know your audience and you know that they have a, a demand for a particular tech then you know go for go for that path whether that be you know uh, Ruby on Rails versus Python or OCI versus AWS. Um, don't don't pick the tech and then go farm that out. Figure out a company you want to work for. Figure out what tech stacks they have, and then cater your learning journey towards that. Yeah, and, and that's that's exactly right because you need to figure out what it is that you want to work in because you're going to be doing that for a while. And so for me, I've always kind of gravitated towards edtech. Um, and so, um, you know, I've worked for a variety of different things, but that's like, I understand all the stuff there, like what a learning record store is. And, and that has to do with like Noah SQL and having skills with that or uh, uh, those kind of things. So I think that if you can kind of determine what it is that you want to do, that's going to that's going to help you a, a lot down the way. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, my, my co-founder, he always worked in um, uh, IT support. So like he knew really well, um, uh, like setting up uh what do you call it uh, accounting software right remotely and doing a lot of that kind of stuff um mm -hmm. and doing remote remote administration of machines uh and so that stuff really focused in a particular thing and then when we worked the school board that kind of translated over that because he was just managing machines uh remotely for for multiple schools um and so the point was is that he wasn't looking to be like i want to learn uh hyper v it was more like um, I, I know that I want to uh, uh, do support work and administrative work and, and work on, on technology there, um, if that makes sense, and then uh, work that way there. So, is I, Andrew, I'm sorry, really quick, Andrew, I have a yeah. curious question for you. Sure. Um, so you've done a career development, you've gone through, you study for the certs, you've gone through the job search, you're in the interview process. Mm -hmm. How big a, uh, how big is it that? um culture or your own personability how much how big is that that play a part into you actually getting the position what's when you say personality like whether people like you yeah because i mean okay. you know you can walk in and then you can spout off all these platitudes about you know aws and you know any of these other platforms but you you don't necessarily are relatable to the you know to the interviewer so you don't necessarily get the job because of that um you know because of that either well i mean i mean it depends on like who you're talking to so like when i talked to startups they really were uh, egalitarian so it was not it wasn't so much that they, they wanted to like you they wanted to like the results that you were going to produce uh when you are uh, more far removed from the top uh it becomes more about whether they want to beat some of the because they want to know whether they want to work with you on a day-to-day -day basis Right. Uh, right. And so, like, I remember, like, one company that I was applying for, I noticed that, uh, you know, we were both dads. Right. So I played the dad card. And, you know, you're not like companies aren't supposed to use bias when hiring. But the point is that you can still use it. It doesn't stop you from doing it. So uh, the other part was that I knew that I was going to be working with like I like I was talking to a CTO and I had been a CTO. And so I, I knew like what CTOs want to hear. And it basically was just like, just use the stuff that we have. And so I, I made this big emphasis to say, uh, it's like, yeah, I, I wanna, I wanna work for you guys. Like, my reason wasn't that, but I just told them, like, I wanna work with you guys because you know I'm trying to support my family and whatever. They go, oh yeah, I understand that, right? And then the other component of it was like, uh, you know, I, I don't want to be a CTO. I just want to support a CTO, and I've been a CTO uh, previously, and so um, I'm just here to work with the technologies that you have, um, and I will, I will create it. Uh, like, I'll do the training and do the on ramp for you. Um, I just want to do that and, 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 and that, that worked, right? So like that's getting the head of the other person. But again, it depends on the scale of the company because at smaller companies, I feel there's more, uh, I don't wanna say manipulation, but I wanna say more uh, ability uh, to tweak the situation in your, in your favor. At larger companies, um, it's a little bit more challenging, I think, so. Mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, I think, it, I think it definitely depends because I'm definitely someone who's, um, one 
most who know me, I'm like that person who's always trying to get the job without a certification because I don't, I like studying for them and getting the knowledge and then like, you know, get hands on experience through work versus having to take the test. And then um, for me, a lot of times it is like, you know, personality as well as being able to speak to the technology as well as I tend to always have a plan where I'm just like, yeah, I understand I'm green, but here's how I'm going to learn the things and stuff like that. And that tends to work really well for me. Oh, here's a great one. John's there. So th- I mean, mm-hmm. my, my question about this would be, so John is saying that they've, they've pip- they're, they're pivoting to software engineering, but what I see there is wealth management. And so, you know, I always think about like, what are cross domains and what is the kind of work that you can have in wealth, uh, wealth management? Because I think you should always try to bring whatever domain experience over uh, yeah. uh, to leverage that work. Um, so my, you know, my question to John is like, have you tried to take your tech skills to that industry and try to apply them there um, as as your starting base. I don't think it matters if you're 50. I, ma- I think it matters. Well, some companies are discriminative. Uh, sorry to say they are discriminative uh, at, at, based on how competitive they are, like startups. Um, but but I would just say that, uh, you know, th- I feel like there should be some opportunity within wealth management, um, specifically with tech uh, or something adjacent to it. Um, and I think that's where you should start. So I'd, I'd love to hear more, uh, ask more about that, but um, I'm not sure if we'd be able to, to squeeze that information out here in this this uh, live stream. Well, we we are getting long into the hour. I want to I want to make sure that Andrew, you get all of your points out that that you wanted to discuss. I, I love the engagement. I love the folks that are chatting. And uh, John Savin, if you want to reach out to either uh, Andrew Brown or myself, you can we'll we'll put we'll put all of our uh, contact information in the in the uh, chat as well because uh, that's all in there anyway but yeah that's that's a that's a particularly salient one right there uh see, that's how i just also turned 50. so <laughs> but, <What>? um, <laughs> but uh but but anyway so so um and and so boris is asking uh, do you feel the cloud space is oversaturated no, I mean, I think it's maturing. I think it's yeah. maturing and and we're having greater expectations in terms of, we know what we want now, right? In terms of uh, uh, employees. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's also just the challenge of, of people, like, you know, the whole RTO thing and uh, the AI tools. Like, I, I, I don't know if it works, but like I was doing another podcast and they were asking me like, hey, Andrew, have you tried uh, taking your resume and, and, and matching up with like telling the AI to, to rework your resume for a job posting. And that's where it gets kind of like scary, like not scary necessarily, but that just tells me like, oh, there's more noise coming. It's gonna <laughs> get harder because now now the now the filter has to fight against that. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I just, again, I, I don't think it's saturated. I just think that, I, but it, like, I think it's like, it's, it's saturated in the sense that there's a lot of people applying, but, um, you know, it's it's not necessarily that all those jobs are being filled. So some people would argue that it's not saturated because it's not a lack of jobs. It's a lack of people wanting to hire uh, people uh, for for not being able to qualify for that work. I'm gonna that I'm gonna plus one that one because saying that the cloud space is oversaturated is it's. It's it's becoming much more directed, and there and the skills needed to the skills needed to be in cloud are the exact same skills that we needed to be in the data center twenty years ago. It's there. There's there's the four food groups. There's RAM, CPU, networking, and disk. There's code that that lives on top of that, and then there's the networking that wraps around that. All of that is still exactly the same. This just happens to be in the cloud with an API on the front end. Security. Um, so. So and, and I'm so I'm sorry, Roger. Yes, security is <laughs> and DR and governance. Get get off my butt. No. <laughs> so so there there is there's no saturation. If anything, most companies are now becoming tech companies, and there's even more need for very particular sets of skills. The this the the I'm, and I'm using finger quotes. The the saturation is in the 100 level employees that are trying to get their foot in the door um, that that don't have a very prescriptive guided learning path. They're like, if everybody came in, if everybody with a resume came in with a cloud practitioner, you you wouldn't know, you 
there would be a lot of noise in there and you'd have to go through a lot of noise to get to the diamonds. Uh, and, and you know, I, I don't say that cloud saturated, but I, I often say that certification holders are saturated. We do have mm -hmm. a lot. Um, and you know that that is what it is. I think the only thing that I didn't get to touch on here was uh, recruit recruiters. Um, you know, I, I don't care for recruiters too much, but like there are companies out there like Jefferson and Frank and other ones that uh, you can uh, try to uh, utilize. Um, you know, going to schools is is still an option. Uh, you do have to do your due diligence. Um, so if you can find schools that have hiring partners, that is very effective. This is for the young folk out there because really this is for people that are coming out of high school, going to, to college or university, or there could be private schools for people uh, in their uh, their earlier, uh, like, you know, 20s or 30s, where they have hiring partners, right? So um, I think that those still exist, but you have to confirm that they actually have hiring partners and, and really, because like my point is that they'll have education materials that necessarily are not superb, but the point is, is that you're paying for the connection um, mm -hmm. and they do exist, um, but you have to understand the odds of, of that right um and i i mean i i can't really tell you which ones i can just say like study hard <laughs> study hard and ask a lot of questions and and if you find that it's really hard like if you if you want to get the information behind closed doors and you can't find other people like testimonials online then uh i would be very wary of of taking that training especially if it's expensive um if, if that makes sense and that kind of training requires a lot of self-motivation and a lot of self-discipline. Um, you can't just plunk down the ten or twenty thousand dollars and think that you're magically going to get a job because they say that they guarantee employment on the front end. That I've I've seen so many people start those kinds of boot camps, and and then get halfway through it and then just drop out. The, the attrition rates can can be high, um, especially in the bad ones. You have to know. You have to have enough self knowledge. You have to know thyself because. If you don't have discipline, if you motivation and discipline are two different things. Motivation is what gets you in the door. Discipline is what keeps you coming back to the classroom every day. If you know that you're not great with discipline, or if you know that <laughs> that you you know fall off after a couple of months, you have to get better at that before before you put down ten thousand dollars on something. Yeah, and and in Canada in particular, we're having a, uh, a a a very serious issue with our accredited schools, where our our government has called it uh, diploma mills because uh, companies uh, the government has not is not funding the public schools as much at, like the college university level as before, and so uh, companies are are targeting international students to make up that revenue. And they're getting diplomas, but their diplomas aren't landing them jobs. So just because the school is accredited doesn't matter. You need to yeah. actually talk to students that are recent alumni and, and make that determination and understand what that process is. But there are schools in Canada, for example, like Waterloo, where th uh, their bar is so high that companies are willing to pay pay for co-op students, right? Like they don't do free co-ops, they get paid to do their co-ops. So these companies have an opportunity to hire them. So, you know, do your due diligence there and private schools are, are an option as well. But uh, uh, you just understand like you are the, the, the they're, they're trying to make money off you. So understand uh, that you mm. get what you, what you want to get out of it, right? So exactly. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I mean, I think I've covered mostly everything that I would like to, to touch here. Um, I have like a talking point here, which, uh, you know, Kirk, I think Kirk suggested it, but he's like, uh, op an option should always be leaving tech. And I was like, well, that's despairing, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's in there. I try to take everybody's feedback, but you know, the only other thing I didn't touch on was like entrepreneurship. So like if, if no one will make the opportunity for yourself, you go make it right. So yeah. like. Uh, you know, like there are things that you can build that have not been touched. Like I can't stand meetup.com. Somebody build a better meetup.com or uh, that's not so darn expensive and integrates with uh, uh, other applications. Uh, there's no cloud job board. Someone go build a cloud job board. Like there's just so many opportunities out there. And my point is, is that if you get to a certain point, you build something, you're going to probably find a company that's trying to build the same thing and they'll just want to acquire you. Like I've, I've had opportunities where like my learning platform, the one that's exam pro, like when we were getting started out here, I wasn't making tons of money uh, with my, my courses, 
I was making money because I licensed out my software to three different private schools. And I wasn't trying to do it. I was just so excited to show someone my ed tech software that when I was in Toronto, I was just showing them and I asked them what they were using. They said, we want what you have. Can we just license it from you? So, uh, you know, even if you can't uh, necessarily sell, like have a, like a product that makes money online, maybe there's a company that wants to acquire your, your technology to get them started. Where's, where's the boot camp on that? Hmm? <laughs> that would be, that would well, but, be nice well, I mean, like, you know, I, like we built Credder, but people could kept going with it. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then Twitter could acquire it. I don't know. I like, I'm just saying like, there's, there's, there, like in in the social space, like Crutter, like there are there are tech creators uh, that are uh, similar to me, where they just want to have a um, a social platform, and they use similar software. I think there's one called like Circle So, right? So Circle So, and they could have taken that app and turned it into a community platform and kept going with it, but you got to do that. I like I can't I can't take everyone through i can't drag people through the whole process they have to do it uh, themselves and find those opportunities but definitely you could have you could have took the credit app made it more like circle uh, circle so talk to people that uh were trying to uh, look for similar products and you could you could turn that into a business uh or flip it flip it into work or somehow or maybe one of those content creators has a lot of money and they just want you to be an employee and to run the platform you know it's a thing you know what i mean it is but uh, yeah, so I mean, that's all I have have to share uh, today. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. Uh, Most people want to hear about my stretching routine. I started um, stretching. <laughs> this sounds that silly, but I have actually started stretching. Like I want to touch my toes, like really good. And so I started <laughs> this. Uh, um, there's this uh, Canadian YouTuber that's a, a contort contortionist. And so Wait, every you can't touch your toes. Uh, not very well. <laughs> so I, oh, what, what okay. I really want to do, what I really want to do is I want to break into the splits at any given moment, like Johnny Cage. But um, I, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm setting my goals easier here. I didn't want to tell people my big goal, but I want to keep it simple. Touch my toes. And then eventually okay, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so like when I go on, like if I go to like a, like a cloud talk, that's the first thing I'll do. I'll just be like, Boom, just drop into it. <laughs> so let's go take some time. You're you're gonna you're gonna snap something on stage and I'm gonna be there to film it. I'm gonna and I'm gonna laugh my ass off as I'm carrying you off stage. You're the best, Andrew. Yes. All right. Um Oh, we we are at time, folks. Uh thank you everybody for the wonderful questions this evening. Andrew Brown, thank you as always for coming on the show. Shala and Roger, always a pleasure to have you guys here. Have a great night. <laughs>